listening to Operation Self Reset with Jake Naraki. If you control your mind, you can control your life. What is going on, Resetters? This is Operation Self Reset, and I am Jake Naraki. Again, like always, thank you so much for all the support, all the emails, all the questions, all the reviews, everything. You guys are great. Really love the support. Um, This podcast is becoming more and more popular because of you guys listening in. I appreciate your time. Your time is valuable, but you know what? If you're able to get a couple of tips to transform your life in a direction that can improve it for yourself, for your family, for everybody that surrounds you, it might be worth it. So, So stay tuned with all these podcasts. So thank you so much. Now, before we dive in today's interview, I have a very interesting interview. I'll get to that in a second, but I kinda wanna focus in on what, this podcast is really about. I kind of said it time and time again throughout these podcasts, but the thing is I really want to harness is um, there might be a little bit of unclarity of really the direction of this. And the other day, somebody asked me, you're like, you know, Jake, I really like your podcast. I just don't really understand, like, what is it about? You know, is it about motivation? Is it about inspiration? Is it about, you know, getting past difficulties? You know, all that stuff. And he goes, I understand, you know, transforming your life, but I, I want more details. And it was funny to me because it was kind of shocking, like, oh, I'm surprised I wasn't as clear as I should be. Every single thing that we do starts with our mindset. And that is what I'm trying to really understand throughout this podcast and through the website and all the everything that I'm doing for Operation Self Reset, trying to control our mind so we can control our future. Maybe that should be my tagline. I was actually thinking of a tagline and it just came out naturally. So there you go. There's my new tagline. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. What I'm trying to trying to portray is that our mind can give us the world, literally. Our mind can open up doors that we never thought possible. The reason why I do interview these, you know, interesting people like uh, Mike Thornton, for example, the Navy SEAL, you know, it wasn't about, wow, you know, he's a Medal of Honor recipient. Oh, congratulations to Mike. It's about understanding how did his mind react in a time when he ran on ammunition, he's on a beach, and there's a, you know, a mob of people in front of him shooting at him, and now he threw his gun to the ground, and now what? He went and swam, and not only did he swim, he swam for three hours. I wanted to know, what the heck do you think about while you're swimming for three hours in the open ocean? You know, like, that's what we're trying to understand. So, by the by his answer and explanation, we possibly can gain a little bit of that knowledge and implement that into our daily life. For example, what he responded with that, because I'm not going to leave you hanging, he just said, you know what, I kept confident, I kept positive, I kept on telling the the other people that were swimming with me that we can do this, we got to believe in ourselves, we will get rescued, that positive mental attitude. Because when times are extremely, extremely tough, and the other people around you might be so negative and stuff like that, what are you going to do? Are you going to be negative with them and just go, well, you know what, forget it, we might as well just drown? Or are you going to say, no, we can get found, we're going to get rescued, we're going to continue our lives because we are destined to live. And that's the stuff that we're trying, or excuse me, I'm trying to portray through this podcast. Not as deep as that every single podcast, but more of just understanding how we can control our mind to control our future. Our mind allows us to talk to individuals that we might be nervous to. Our mind allows us to sit down for that interview and feel confident about ourselves and believe in ourselves that we should get that position or the confidence to jump out of that airplane because you know what? We want to experience skydiving for the first time and it might be our last time and we just want to knock it off our bucket lifts, but we have to harness our mind to harness our future. So that's what Operation Self Reset is about. There's numerous other tips about time management, you know, you know how to get better sleep, all that other stuff. Understandable. It's about helping our lives get better, but at the same time, trying to understand that our mind controls our future, and if we can harness that in a way or put it in a direction a little bit, it'll portray and propel us in a direction better than where we are currently. So with that being said, I want to roll in today's interview. His name is Sean Reeder, and I came across his work. He's actually a professional photographer. He travels around the country, around the world, and he takes beautiful movies of nature at its pinnacle. Um, Once you see his work, I I promise you, you will not want to walk away from the computer or click off screen. You will be engaged in his work because it is so passionate, it's so rich, and the the things that he captures is unbelievable. I mean, the way he sets up his cameras is remarkable. 
I really don't know the real way he does it, but to give you listeners kind of a, a glimpse of how the, how he films his stuff, he puts his camera on a like a little track, and that track pulls the camera very, very slowly, and he takes recordings of sunsets, sunrises, and he takes pictures of, you know, the moonscape, of the stars, everything against, you know, mountain ranges, and his work is 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 gorgeous. It really is. And when I saw that, I was searching on YouTube for something, and like anybody, you get, you know, you start clicking on other uh, videos, and I saw this thing called our Yosemite Range of Lights. And my wife and I actually went to Yosemite National Park a few years back, and we absolutely loved it. If you guys are looking for a family vacation or somewhere to go and be in nature, I'm telling you, Yosemite top five national parks, maybe in the world, you got to go visit. It's spectacular. So anyway, back to Sean. So I emailed him and I said, hey, you know what, Sean? Uh, Would you be interested in coming on the podcast and talking to us? I I really enjoy nature. I really enjoy Yosemite. I would like to hear your story, what you're about, all that stuff. And he um, actually was in Australia at the time, so I've been talking to his dad. When Sean came back from Australia, we sat down, we talked a little bit, and he, um, he said he would love to come on the podcast. And I said, you know, this podcast is really about transformation, transforming your life, you know, getting back on track, you know, setting your goals, focusing on the tasks that approach you in your life and and getting yourself in a better place. And he said, you know what, I think I have a couple of things to share. So that is why I recorded this interview. Um, you know, be forewarned, Sean is very passionate in his work. He, he loves it to death. Sean is a very uh, free-spirited um, understanding about, you know, just kind of how the whole world universe kind of works. Now, if you guys ever read The Secret, we do touch base on that in the interview. Um, the Secret is kind of about believing in the universe working with you. And there's going to be people out there that are listening that either love that concept or they think that is the most ridiculous concept ever. So that's really up to you to decide. But either way, this interview um, will really make you appreciate nature. And maybe at the end of this, you could just enjoy nature a little bit more because because I'm telling you, after you listen to Sean, and then if you go on the website, operationselfreset.com, on there I'm going to have the video uh, linked up already. Just press play and enjoy it, and you will be in awe. So here's the interview with Sean Reeder. Welcome, OSR community. Today we have somebody that, when I saw this video, was emotionally got me just excited to be alive, excited to be a part of this great world. And he instilled in me something that I personally have always respected, always understood, but never really took to a personal level. And that was taking nature as your energy of just enjoying life and living for the moment. I have Sean Reeder with me, and he is a professional photographer and Sean, welcome to the podcast. Great to hear you and to be with you on this podcast. Well, thank you so much, Jake. I really appreciate you reaching out to me and inviting me to share this conversation with you. You know, for the people out there that have never heard your name, and actually, I did not know you until I can, I came across your uh, link or excuse me, your video on YouTube. Um, if you wouldn't mind kind of telling the people out there who you are and, and what you kind of all are, are all about. Well, my name is Sean Reeder. Um, I live in um, California's beautiful Sierra Nevada mountains, and um, I am a photographer, a time-lapse cinematographer. I am basically a visual artist, somebody I have a passion for life, and I love to share, you know, the beauty of nature with others, you know, through my art. That's um, something that's very important to me. Now. Looking at, you know, for the people out there that are hearing this for the first time, they never seen your work, they'll check it out when they go to the website or when they do a kind of Google search on you. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I am a kind of a, I like photography, you know, I enjoy it, I, I like to get good at it. How long did it take you to perfect your art? Well, you know, I started shooting pictures actually when I was introduced to Yosemite. And it's kind of hard to come to a place like Yosemite and not just be completely overwhelmed by its awe-inspiring beauty. There's no place like it. I think it's hard to come to Yosemite and not become a changed person. And I actually won a trip to Yosemite when I was 18 years old. And so here I am, 18 years old. I grew up on the East Coast, and I fly out to California, and I drive into Yosemite, and I was just dumbstruck. I just saw this place and it was just like, oh my God, is this for real? And I knew right then in that instant that my life would never be the same. 
And so I spent a week in Yosemite, and I was actually traveling with a friend, and he had a little point-and-shoot camera, and he wasn't using it. I was like, hey, you know, can I use it? And so I started you know, taking pictures because I wanted to share it with my friends and family in the East back home. I just wanted to be like, oh my God, look at this place. It's incredible. And so that was really my introduction to not only Yosemite, but to photography. And I knew right then that I needed to come back. And within six months, I actually had moved back to Yosemite. I got a summer job in the park. And that started basically the next chapter of my life, you know, which included not only falling in love with nature, but falling in love with the, you know, the ability to share that love with others through photography. Yeah. And so it's been a, it's been a long process. I mean, I've lived in and out of Yosemite now for over 15 years Mm -hmm. and it's been this evolutionary journey of the more I get to know myself, the more I get to, you know, be immersed in nature, the more my vision has refined through photography, through cinematography to be able to share that with others. Now, how did you now, know, did you know when, you when you walked into Yosemite? I mean, were you, uh, first of all, I want to ask, were you into nature prior to this? I mean, were you inspired like you were when you walked into Yosemite? Did you always have a respect for nature? Um, being on the East Coast, you know, were you always kind of, you know, going around to your, your local parks, you know, hanging around outside? You know, how did you kind of get raised up to really appreciate nature when you were put in that situation walking into Yosemite? Well, you know, I... I always did have an appreciation for nature, but I didn't even realize it. You know, when I was back in the East Coast and I was younger and growing up, I loved to run around in the woods and play outside. And, you know, I had our house actually backed up the woods through throughout most of my growing up. So I did enjoy going out and exploring. And but it was really Yosemite that really made me understand it at a whole nother level. Yeah, it was, you know, Yosemite that really instilled in me like, oh, my God, nature is life changing. And it really instilled in me also an understanding and an immersion that made me recognize that everything is energy. You know, when I was growing up and just running around the woods, it was just being a kid. I didn't really have any idea of how much it was affecting me. And But once I came to Yosemite and not only got immersed in the nature, but was introduced to a whole new group of people. A whole new group of people that, you know, that valued that time in nature, that loved exploring in the mountains and being outside and climbing to the tops of peaks and hiking along the river and, you know, being around a culture of people that appreciated it at such a deep level. It made me and my understanding of nature, you know, raised to a whole new level. Yeah. When now you are just so in love with nature. I mean, you're just so passionate. You feel the energy, like you just said. There's people listening. This is, you know, this is, podcast is all about changing your life for the better, you know, resetting, starting over, taking that step in the new direction. When somebody listens to this podcast and they're going to be hearing your passion just pour through the microphone, how can somebody listen to this in their own personal world, not knowing where they're located, find that, find that just that fire within, that understanding of this is, I, I you know, you didn't know anything about Yosemite. You walked into this and you just knew at that moment. How can people kind of experience the same thing that you went through? Well, you know, we all have our different path and we all have our journey to walk in this life. And, you know, for some people that will be through nature, for some people that will be through music, for some people that will be through serving others, you know, for some people, there's so many different ways that we can find our own passion. And for me, it came through nature. And, and, you know, and that nature was also an introduction to a life of art as well, interestingly enough, because I wasn't a photographer before I got inspired by the mountains of Yosemite. And I actually grew up a musician. And, and that, you know, instilled in me a love of art. And, but then to come into the nature and really, you know, be touched by its profound energy, I knew that I had to share that with others. And so for people to find their own passion, I think it takes just really being honest with yourself, really being genuine and authentic with yourself, transparent, completely transparent to look at yourself and be like, what is important to me? What is my passion? What do I love? And how can I use that to transform my life? It's going to be different for all of us. I happen to believe personally that there is this universal connection through nature that can inspire us all. 
not everybody's going to wander around around and live in the mountains for years. And, and I understand that. And that's great. That's not everybody's path. But I still think just even taking those little moments, whether it's a walk outside, you know, down to the local park, going out in your backyard, whatever it might be, I feel like getting outside and connecting with, you know, with the trees or with the mountains or with the ocean or, you know, whatever it is that, you know, it has these natural elements. I really feel like it has an profound archetypal impact on us. I believe that we all have this connection to nature because ultimately nature is a grand representation to me of the oneness that is everything. And, you know, whether you look at oneness from a quantum physical perspective, from a spiritual perspective, from an ancient belief system perspective, it's my belief that we are all one at the most fundamental level. And I feel like when we embrace nature, that we feel that oneness in a way that, you know, helps us reconnect to our own selves. Yeah. So you're saying that nature kind of brings everybody to that starting point. You know, everybody can enjoy it in their own personal way and it affects all of us, you know, and like you said, just taking that a little extra time and going outside, you know, listening to the birds, even though you're in a city, you know, it's those little moments that you can take. And then also too, even if you're not a person that enjoys nature, I mean, look at the, you know, when you go on a trip, most of the time you're taking pictures outside, you're taking pictures of, of things going on around you and the scenery because it is, it is striking, you know? And, and one thing I want to touch on, you keep on bringing up time after time, especially when you start talking about nature and, you know, Yosemite, what is this energy you speak of? Is this an energy that, um, that just gets you emotionally charged? You just feel motivated. You just feel cleansed. What does this energy mean for you? Well, that's a very, you know, that's a brilliant question. And, you know, energy to me is the basis of all that is. Okay. And, you know, I feel like this world that we live in is just one complex ocean of energy. You know, this one all encompassing oneness that, you know, permeates throughout everything mind and matter and people and places and nature and the cosmos that everything ultimately is connected through this web of energy. I happen to believe that that energy is consciousness and that consciousness, you know, by its nature is the foundation of the universe, the foundation of all that is. And that ultimately we are all one, that we're all connected through this universal ocean of consciousness. Now, of course, we individualize our consciousness. And, you know, in consciousness, just like everything in nature, there's different levels and different levels of truth. So at one level of truth, yes, you and I might be different people. You're Jake, I'm Sean, we have our different lives. But, and that's true. Mm-hmm. But at a, at a different level, at a more fundamental level, we're also the same. That we come from this universal ocean of energy, you know, that permeates everything. And... And that, you know, everything is just this huge sea of vibration. And so to me, that is the energy. And I feel like we're living in a time period where actually more and more people are starting to waken up and become aware of this energy and and, and the connection that we all share. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, um, you know, the universe as a general and understanding the surroundings affect you, you know, emotionally, spiritually, uh, physically is very profound, especially in a lot more books are really tapping into that than, you know, probably previously. You know, you again, great explanation on the energy and, and understanding it. But how can a person listening to this harness that? How can they pull that energy into their life today and use it to their advantage? Do you have any suggestions or, or tips for them? Well, I do. You know, there's there's a lot of ways and everybody's going to have their own way of connecting to the energy. Um, to me, one of the most simple ways, one of the most easily accessible ways is to go out and take a walk in nature. Because it seems like when you do that, when you go out and you open yourself up to your surroundings, to the energy around you, that it helps quiet your mind, that it helps you become more present. You know, because I think that is one of the keys is to be present. It's so easy easy for us to think about what happened to us or what's going to happen or what we're planning for. But all we really ever have is the eternal moment of now. That's all there ever really is. And so being present is, you know, something that enables us to touch that deep fundamental aspect of ourself, that eternal moment of now that is always with us. And I think another beautiful way to do that is through meditation. 
you know, meditation is an, a beautiful way to be able to quiet your mind, to be able to come into the present, to be able to connect to the universal energy. Yeah. Yeah, very true with the meditation, uh, something that I need to do more of, and I bet a lot of people listening to this also need to try to dive into that and really understand, and, and like you said, quiet the mind, allows you to focus on the task ahead. Um, now, present, you know, a lot of people use, to be present, they say, you know, really focus on what's going on in front of you, you know, make sure you're you're all, you know, you, you got all your caffeine on board, and, and you're really just zoned in on the task at hand. Being present is more than just getting chemically influenced to focus on the tasks that are in front of you. And you're saying that nature can provide that that almost like that the cleanliness of resetting yourself and then bringing yourself to a point of maybe you, you, be right before going into work, you're going to go around the block real quick and just enjoy nature, kind of purify yourself, let everything go, and then go into work and focus on the task at hand. Is that what you're kind of saying with the present? Well, I'm saying that's one way to okay, achieve it. Okay. And ulti- ultimately, I think, you know, one of the easiest ways to become present is to focus on the breath, to focus on the breathing, to breathe consciously with awareness, to, you know, come right there into that eternal moment of now, to breathe in, to breathe out. And it's not easy. You know, our minds want to keep talking. I know for me, it's not easy. I know my mind tends to be very active and it it can take quite a conscious effort for me to settle the mind. And sometimes I'll be honest, it's hard for me to do and sit down meditation. It's something that I appreciate in my life. It's a challenge for me. It helps me, you know, incorporate discipline into my life, but it's not easy. And sometimes it'll take me a long time of sitting there focusing on breathing to really come into that true presence. It's so easy for our minds to wander. They've got so many things to think about. And yet, you know, when you just focus on your breath, it's almost like it enables you to connect to your heart, you know, because the heart tends to be more centered in the present while the mind just loves to think about what happened or what's going to happen or all different types of things. But for me, I find that walking in nature, you know, obviously just the act of walking, the exercise, that helps you become focused on your breath because, you know, it's your body's exerting itself. We need oxygen, you you know, and so you just tend to naturally start focusing on your breath. And I feel like the energy of the woods and the mountains and the trees and the lakes and the rivers, the things that surround us, they just have this subtle influence on us that helps us really come into the moment. Now, you are very um, understanding of just bringing the universe into yourself, controlling your breathing, focusing, calming the mind, all different aspects. Were you always like this? As you said, when you're 18, you got this free trip to Yosemite, you went there, and that's kind of when the transformation took place. But prior to that, were you were you kind of always, I don't want to say a free spirit, but always understanding of, of things going around you? Were you raised in that direction, and that kind of led you then to Yosemite and understanding this is the path you need to go down? Do you mind kind of giving us a kind of a history of, of where you began emotionally and where you are today? Well... You know, I mean, just like all of us, I have my own path. Yeah. And and it hasn't always been, you know, like this. I feel like growing up that I went through a lot of the same struggles that everybody went through. I wanted to fit in. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to try to be like the person I thought, you know, would make people like me. I, I wanted to be accepted. Sure. And and so I've gone through my path. I've done things that I'm not happy about. I've you know, I've had experiences that were really tough, but ultimately I do feel that in my deepest core of cores, at my most innermost being, I have always known that I wanted to live this life, this path of awareness, and that I ultimately wanted to share love with others. Because really, that's my mission in life, is to spread love to others. I happen to love to do that through my art because I feel like when people appreciate beauty, that they're actually seeing that beauty inside themselves, that they're allowing healing energy inside themselves. And so I love to be able to share that with others. And But I've had to go through and see my dark sides in order to be able to choose the light. Right. No, that's, no, that's so true. Um, 
when you were going through this process and you said you were trying, you know, like going as any young man, woman in this world, trying to fit in, trying to understand when you found your path and it was time for you, I'm kind of going back to uh, your, your, your films here. When you started producing this and you started putting it out there and letting other people's in, people enjoy it, I would imagine the response has just been excellent, correct? I mean, for the most part, everybody's been responded greatly to this. Was there anybody that before you publishing this that was kind of holding you back? Were you kind of nervous? Were you maybe just excited? Or, or did you feel like, oh, I, I hope everybody likes this, but I know not everybody's going to like it? What kind of mind chatter was going on? Uh, because the reason why I ask this is during the podcast that I have previously recorded, there's been a lot of times that we talk about other aspects coming into your life to make decisions that you need to do. And I was just curious if there was anything like that that arose in your life, especially when it was time for you to put yourself out there and to publish your work. Well, you know, to be perfectly honest, I was not nervous in the least Perfect. bit. Perfect. Good. I feel like I feel like something hit me, you know, a few years ago and made me realize beyond any shadow of a doubt that my path was to share this vision of beauty with others. And so once I just felt on my path, you know, it's like the synchronicity of the universe has just fallen into place. You know, the people I've met, the experiences I've shared, the, you know, life opportunities that have come my way have all been steering me in this direction to be able to share this vision of beauty with others. And so I haven't felt nervous at all. I just feel on my path. I mean, and it, and that's a beautiful feeling to know deep inside my heart that I'm living the life that I've come here to live. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And Again, I don't know if this is my true calling, but I really do feel like I'm on the right path, you know, and I don't know where this path's going to lead, but I really feel passionate about providing value for people out there. And I, like I talk about so much is I'm not the guru, you know, I'm not the Mr. I'm going to stand up here and tell you how to transform your life. That's why I'm talking to like minded individuals. That's why I'm picking your brain and trying to understand, you know, who is Sean Reader? How did he get to this, you know, way of understanding nature and using it to his advantage? And, and that's, that's why this is, this is excellent. I mean, you hit it on the head and especially early on, you and I were speaking about your work and, and how you, do you mind, I, I, I was actually going to hit on this a little later, but maybe we can dive into this now about uh, one of your current product, projects, about how you were just recently in New Zealand. And I asked if you were out there for work or was it just pleasure? And do you mind kind of restating how you answer that question? Absolutely. Well, one thing I found in life is that by following my own passion, by following my heart, that it's actually enabling me to make a living by just living. Yeah. And so when I went to New Zealand, I went for a personal project. You know, for me, personal projects have been a huge part of my evolution in this life. And that I've gone out and done things for myself just because that's what I wanted to do. But also knowing that I wanted to share with others and that it's actually brought me work, you know, beyond what I could have ever imagined. And so it's hard to even think of it as work. I feel like I have this beautiful opportunity where I just get to live. And by living, by being, that it also enables me to make a living. And, and, and I feel like that's something that we can all do. It's something that if we really connect with ourselves at our deepest level, our truest essence, and we are true to that, and it won't happen overnight. And it takes hard work. It's not like you just all of a sudden everything falls into place. You know, I feel like not in addition to just you know following your passion that you have to work hard that you have to be proactive that you have to begin with the end in mind that you have to have a vision you have to follow through and that these are character traits you know that help us grow and evolve but that by being true to our heart by being true to our truest essence that there is this synchronicity that comes with it all that helps everything just flow and that by tapping into that flow, you know, with the right perfect balance of, you know, being in the flow and working hard and having a vision 
that, you know, our dreams can come true. Yes. And one other thing that you forgot to say characteristic is taking risks like yourself. You know, you got that free trip. You were proactive about it. You took the, the step of taking action and put yourself out there. I mean, think if you didn't, if you didn't think, if you did not go out to Yosemite, where would you be today? Right. I mean, who knows? Maybe you would end up there, but it, the process might have took a little longer. So uh, one other thing I wanted to add was just uh, taking an action and, and doing it and getting and getting out there. Wouldn't you say? Well, if we never take risks, we're never going to achieve our highest vision of who we are, you know, because that takes stepping outside of our comfort zone. It's so easy just to stay in this little comfort zone of what we know. But I feel like whenever we step outside of our comfort zone, when we take a risk, that the potential for something beyond what we could have ever imagined is there waiting for us. Yeah. yeah. A few things that were stated in your most recent project, um, you had a couple of lines in there that really struck a chord with me. And one of the lines was, uh, uh, time is just an illusion. What what struck that with you? I mean, everybody that, that's going to hear that, especially with the uh, you know, with your work going on in the background, and you hearing that, it, it kind of all comes to one. But when you just state that, what does that kind of personally mean to you? Time is just an illusion is you know, basically saying that all we really have is the eternal moment of now. I mean, anything that's happened to us in the past is gone. Anything that's in the future hasn't happened yet. But we always have this eternal moment of now. It's the only moment that there ever really is. And it's always with us. Yeah, no, that's so true. Um, and you hit that on the head. I, what I personally believe too. You're, you're right. Now, what happened in the past is tough to let go. Um, but like you stated before, your mind lives in the past and lives in the future because you're always thinking of the next thing. Uh, but your heart lives in the now, and, and that is remarkable. One other uh, line when there is, uh, "Be the light that you are." Kind of going back to characteristics, and you know, taking steps to you know find your passion and stuff like that. But what does it kind of associate with you? Be the light you are is one of my favorite quotes. And, you know, to be honest, you know, my dear friend Kirsty Ranto, she's a Finnish musical artist, that I have gotten from her. And that is something that has been her mantra for the last few years. Be the light that you are. And it's so simple, yet it's so profound. And because I feel like that's, you know, to me, when you think of the universe as energy and everything's energy and light is energy, and for us to be the light that we are, for us to truly go inside ourselves, find that genuine, authentic place of who we are, and to be able to let that shine, to let us just be, rather than to do, or, you know, just to be, be the light we are. I, I, it's just so profound. And, you know, and that's something that Kiersey has shared over and over and over through her, through her work, through her poems, through her music, through her sharing with others. And it just inspired me at such a deep level. Um, now, a lot of people that are going to be listening to this are going to think that does this have like, have you read, read the book, The Secret by chance? I have not. Okay. I saw okay. the movie, but I haven't read the okay. book. Okay. All right. So, well, you understand the, the same, you know, uh, kind of outline per se. Does this, th does your outlook on life kind of resonate with that, that movie that you saw? Or do you feel that the secret is more of a fluffed up, you know, don't work hard, just kind of believe it and you'll achieve a kind of mantra? Well, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because, you know, I'm not sure how the book sure. was, but I did watch the movie. And I feel like it, it had a lot of points and principles that I truly resonate with, but I feel like it also very much oversimplified the process, yeah. yes. you know, because I do believe in the power of intention being one of the most powerful forces in the universe, but it's not the only force. There's lots of forces out there that are acting upon us. There's karma. There's all these different things that, you know, go into play into creating our reality. And I do feel that we are very active co-creators in creating our reality. But it's not that just we think something and it's going to happen. I just think that's oversimplified. But I do believe that, you know, knowing as opposed to believing, because when you believe something, there's still an element of doubt. Yeah. But when you know something at your core, when you trust and are thankful in advance, I believe those are powerful, you know, moments that can help us create our reality. And, you know, 
And I also feel like that movie was maybe a little bit superficial. Like, I believe the no bills are going to come and all of a sudden <laughs> they just don't come. And it's like, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I think it, it, it was in a lot of ways. And it was a shame because I truly do believe and resonate with what at the core, what they're talking about. I believe that's an important aspect to gaining awareness is to, you know, having you know, what people might call positive thoughts or trusting and, and knowing and helping create our reality. But it's, you know, there's other factors out there as well. And we need to accept that and be aware of that. I think the important, you know, thing to take away from it, at least for me, is unconditional acceptance and unconditional love. You know, that even when things happen to us that aren't what we had hoped for, that are challenging, that if we accept them unconditionally, that they actually give us an opportunity to raise into a new element of ourselves. Because sometimes things can happen that, you know, might seem like a detriment, that might seem like it's hard. How could this happen to me? But if we embrace them with love and we accept them, who knows what kind of lessons might come our way that will enable us to evolve into an even higher vision of ourselves. And that often sometimes those challenges that the character traits that we develop by facing those challenges, you know, those character traits help us also rise to that next higher level of who we really are. Yeah. When, you talked about, you know, believing, going back to the secret, very good points you just made. I feel it was kind of, it kind of ruined it for the people that might have never experienced that, that, uh, that understanding of the universe. You know, I feel like it was kind of a cop out, you know, oh, you know what, don't worry about things, just believe it's going to happen, it'll come. Like you said, you know, say to yourself, no more bills and no more bills come in the mail, only checks. You know, I feel like there, it would, the, the voice was there, just not the the ways of the true uh, living it. You know, it was just, uh, I, I agree with you completely. I mean, I think uh, it was the right thing to do. I think it was the right thing to share. It was just done in a, a bad way, especially if people have never heard that, especially, you know, just in general. You know, I, I'm rambling now. I can't really organize my thoughts, but uh, do you kind of hear what I'm saying, Sean? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I don't know. I, I completely understand. Yeah. I mean, it was unfortunate because that, you know, a movie goes out and really reaches a mass yes, number of people. Yes. And, and I feel like the way they implemented it actually probably turned more people off right. who might have been open to the message if it was presented in a more realistic right. way. But then they see all this fluff like, yeah, just believe for checks, they're going to come. Okay. Right. <laughs> you know, I feel like it could have turned people off and, and maybe even made them less open to the idea because of it being presented that way. And I feel like that's unfortunate because, you know, there was certain core things that they share that I think are important that can help transform our lives. Right. But I also feel like they took a very materialistic way to do it. And, you know, ultimately, you know, I don't think materialism is what's really going to help us find that, you know, higher aspect of ourselves. It's by actually releasing the materialism and by, you know, opening up to just a more genuine kind of authentic view of who we really are. Yeah. Uh, speaking of getting rid of material things, do you mind sharing uh, when you were in New Zealand what you were living in for about three months? <laughs> <laughs> so I traveled around New Zealand in a camper van. Nice, nice. And, you know, it was so great because by just being in a van, it enabled me to really be out there in a way that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Because, I mean, sure, I could have just camped under the stars and maybe had a car and really been out there. But, you know, from a very practical aspect, right. I, you know, I needed, I had gear. I knew I wanted to shoot a film to be able to share with others. And so, you know, I needed to have a certain level of support to be able to have my gear and charge batteries and download information to computers and things like that nature. But by being in a van, by really being out there camping for three months, as opposed to, say, getting hotel rooms and, you know, just going out and shooting here and then, it really enabled me to be there for those magic moments, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to be up for every sunrise and every sunset just because I'm out there. And when the magic comes, that I was there ready and prepared to capture it. Yeah. When you see your own work, I mean, does it still inspire you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It does. And I mean, I, I just feel so fortunate. I, I have chosen this path 
of wanting to live and to explore in some of the most beautiful places on earth. I mean, Yosemite is one of the most beautiful places on earth. New Zealand, you know, there's these incredible places around the globe. And that's what I'm inspired to be and to explore and, and you know, to share. And so, you know, I, I do feel fortunate that, you know, my life is allowing me the opportunity to be in these amazing places and giving me the, you know, ability to share them with others. Yeah. You know, I didn't mean to, if you took offense to that, it wasn't, uh, you know, like, I was just curious because a lot of times people do find their passion. They get, they're just so inspired to be moving forward with something that they absolutely love, but then they get distracted by, you know, people contacting them for podcasts, for example, or, you know, you're caught up in the editing or trying to match the music to the to the right details. And, and it's the little things you get wrapped up in. And sometimes people do get separated from their work, from their true passion. So that's why I just wanted to ask, you know, in, in a general question of, you know, does it still inspire you? And, and it, it, luckily it still does, because that just means that you, you really are in a, a place that you're just, you're, you're, that's right for you, you know, and um, your work is, is absolutely brilliant and i can't wait for people to to view it online um let's i do appreciate that jake and, I, and i'd like to say that i'm actually more inspired than ever and the reason being is because as i continue to shoot in these incredible places and as i continue to share you know my circle of influence has been growing and the amount of people that are touched by my yes. work is growing. And so that's what feeds me. It's not just about me. Right. It's by getting the feedback from people like, wow, that really touched me. That, that made me feel emotional. That made me feel inspired. That made me want to go out and experience, you know, beautiful nature. You know, by getting this types of responses, by, you know, recognizing that the work I'm doing is actually – you know, helping others, that inspires me at a whole nother level because ultimately that's what I really want to do. I want to give back. You know, I've gotten to, you know, I spent most of my 20s just living in nature and it was kind of all about me. Yeah. I was out there wanting to, you know, find myself. I was out there, you know, wanting to, you know, experience what made me feel good. And it wasn't until I actually had an event towards the end of my 20s where I had an accident rock climbing. Mm. And um, rock climbing was my main passion throughout my 20s. And it was an incredible way to be out in nature because, you know, it, it combines the elements of being so focused and so present in the moment, but with athleticism and, you know, and this incredible opportunity to climb mountains and experience nature in a very intense, raw, you know, emotional way. And, and yet it didn't, I wasn't doing anything for anyone else. And so towards the end of my 20s, I actually blew out my knee rock climbing and I had to have a surgery and I was on crutches for six months. And there I was, I couldn't follow my passion sure. and I was like, well, what, what can I do? And that's when it really hit me. It was like, you know, it's time for me to start sharing with others. I've had, you know, I've gotten to live in Yosemite, one of the most beautiful places on earth for the last decade. And if all I do that for is myself... That doesn't give me right. nearly the satisfaction of being able to share that amazing energy with others. And so that was quite a turning point in my life. Yeah, no, for sure. Like you said, sharing this. Um, that's the reason why I'm talking to you because I want to share this to more people. You know, um, it, it, it really touched me and that's why I had to track you down and, and find out what you're all about. And, um, and it, like I said, the people out there listening, when you get a chance, you have to, you have to, you have to log on and check out uh, Sean's work. It's just remarkable. And, and like Sean said, it'll affect you in different ways. And, and, uh, and hopefully you get some great benefit from it. Now you were talking about a lot of people getting back to you and, and telling you, wow, this was great. This is exactly what I needed. You know, one of the questions I have is throughout your process and throughout the emails that just come in day after day, what seems to be the reoccurring theme? You know, what's the one thing that, that people are always struggling with that, that seem to, uh, find clarity when they see your work. Do you have uh, some examples? That's a tough yeah, question. Yeah, it's a loaded question. <laughs> it really is. It really is. <laughs> yeah, because I think everybody has their different struggles yeah. and different paths. And, and, you know, but one thing I will say is that a lot of people that, you know, that do reach out to me, whether it's, you know, via email or Facebook or, you know, all those different avenues, one reoccurring theme is that people are very, you know, interested in just getting in touch with themselves. Yeah. 
And, and often I feel like by seeing something that's so beautiful and profound from nature, whether it's an incredible mountain or a moment, you know, at sunrise that just came together with this perfect intersection of clouds and light and texture and mood that, you know, people see these, you know, moments and for some reason or another, it just, you know, helps them get inspired to see that inside themselves, even if they don't realize it, you know, because I feel like whenever we appreciate beauty, that we're actually seeing it inside of ourselves. And so I think even if the people don't realize it, the people that have reached out to me, you know, there's been this deep seated desire to, you know, to find that love with inside themselves. And the more we find that love with inside ourselves, the more we can help share it with others. It's like this ripple effect that goes out into the world. You know, every time we appreciate beauty, every time we, you know, see something that makes us feel love, that we're feeling that inside of ourselves, and then we're sharing it with someone else, and they're sharing it with someone else. And it's just this incredibly beautiful, you know, flow that goes out into the world. And I feel like it can change the world. You have traveled the world. You have seen some amazing places you recorded some amazing stuff throughout your time traveling and talking to people and you know just moving around the world was there any one person or a story or a moment that really struck you that was defining to yourself that really was like this person that I just talked to, he went through some struggle, he succeeded and he's at this location. Or you saw this moment and I mean, you've been seeing nature at its finest moments years after years after years. But was there anything else that really struck you besides being in nature at those great, great moments? You know, it's interesting you asked that question because just recently I had a very profound experience and I met someone that I really, you know, impacted me. And that person's name is Ama. She is an Indian spiritual teacher and humanitarian. And she travels around the world giving people hugs. Wow. And, and she's been doing this for like over 25 or 30 years. And she's hugged like over, I think, like 31 million different people. Wow. And, and I mean... I, you know, I've always been interested in spirituality and throughout my, you know, growing up and throughout all the different years of being exposed to different philosophies and spiritualities and concepts and ideas and gurus and, you know, I've had mixed experiences sure. to be honest. I've met gurus who I've, where I felt a sense of spiritual elitism, you know, where I felt a strong sense of ego, where I felt like this you know, that these words that they would speak didn't match up with the energy that I was feeling inside them. And then I would see that the people that were looking up to them, you know, they would idolize them and put them up on this pedestal. And it just never felt right to me. And and there was even a part of me, honestly, that wondered, like, why do people, you know, feel this need for a guru? You know, why do people, you know, feel this strong calling to that? And I went to a retreat with Alma just last week. And I had I've heard about Amma for years now, but in the last year, especially some of my closest friends, you know, have a really deep, beautiful, profound love for Amma. And she has inspired them to make very, you know, life changing choices. And um, so I wanted to go meet Amma myself. And so I went there and, and it's hard to go into an experience, you know, like that, not having expectations, right. you know, part of me was wondering is like, wow, when she gives me this hug, am I just going to feel this like completely otherworldly experience? I'm like anything I've ever experienced in my <laughs> right, life. Right. And, you know, but I was trying to go in without having any expectations yes. by just being truly open. And, and so when I met Ama and I got to say, what I really felt in her was this just unbelievably pure, present, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but just filled with joy. I mean, Amma walks into a room and she just lights it up. She's just mm -hmm. smiling. And, you know, I mean, yeah. you just look at her and she just has this incredible smile and she just radiates genuine, authentic, unconditional love. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. And when I went to get my first hug, you know, I, I did not feel this like life changing, earth shattering, like, oh my God, I'm going to float out of my body <laughs> right, energy. Right. But it was very subtle. 
and the whole process of being with her and around people, you know, opening up for three days was very profound. And by the end of the retreat, it had really affected me deeply. And it made me realize that I've actually always had a guru myself. I just didn't even realize it. But my guru has been nature. Uh. And, you know, and, and so like, Sometimes I know people, they like to have pictures of their guru. I never quite understood that. I was like, does the guru want to be idolized? Or, you know, why is that? You know, and then I realized it's not that at all. Yeah. You know, that people by surrounding themselves with pictures, they're, that they're inspired. That they're inspired to live out their highest vision of who they are. I love having pictures of nature around me. It inspires me. It reminds me that to be like, yes. You know, I want to live out my highest vision of myself. I don't want to take the easy path. I want to, you know, spread love to the world. And, and you know, so having those images around me inspires me. You know, just like having images of Amma or a guru around others inspires sure. them. And so it was, a, it was a really beautiful experience to meet Amma. And the other thing that I really love about Amma that I haven't necessarily found in other spiritual teachers was this incredible balance of both spirituality and practicality. You know, she talks about as much about eating organic and sustainable farming, you know, as she does about connecting to our highest selves. Mm. And, and I just love that. You know, because we do live on this earth and we do have to sustain it and we do have these physical bodies. And, you know, we don't, I don't want to put genetically modified crap inside my body if I can help it, right. you know, because I, I, you know, it makes a difference in living our lives. Yeah, understanding the process now, it, it is very powerful and understanding that our bodies are, you know, our, our life. I mean, this is what, this is the only body we have, you know, and we got to take care of it the best way we can and we got to take care of Mother Earth and, the good thing is that there's more research and more understanding of, you know, taking care of Mother Earth because it's going to take care of us in the long run. But that's a whole nother podcast episode. So we're going to have to hold off on that. A couple of quotes that you brought up earlier in the, the, the podcast here was, you know, be the light you are was a huge something you really believe in and understanding and just the information you provided was excellent. Is there any other quotes that you maybe live by or is just something that you glance at daily that you can share with us? Yeah, that, that's yeah, a tough a question. Lot. I mean, yeah, there, there, there is so many. I, I do happen to love something that I try to remind myself of regularly is that all we have is the eternal moment of now, you know, because it can be so easy to get wrapped up in, you know, what's happened or what's going to happen. And it can, and it's so easy to take us out of our center, but all we really have is that no, that moment right here right now. And it's not easy for me. I, I mean, I'll tell you, I have an active mind and, but by being aware of it, by, you know, it, it really does inspire me because I do find that when I find that presence inside of myself, that, that life just seems to work. Everything just seems to happen. And I'm not saying that I don't work hard and that I don't, that I'm not proactive to, to, to create life because I am. But I think the key is to do it without attachments and expectations. And it's not easy, especially when we work hard because we get attached to something and we want it to work. But to be able to be proactive, to have a vision, to work towards it and to be present, but without attachments and expectations, I believe that's one of the you know, most beautiful aspects of the art of life because life really is an art. And, you know, and, and I don't even think very many people think about it in that way. But to me, one of the most, you know, profound ways to embrace the art of life is just to be in the eternal moment of now, to be the light that you are in the eternal moment of now. First of all, Sean's work is remarkable. I mean, when you see it, it doesn't matter if you know Sean, if you ever heard about him or whatnot, you'll be inspired. I guarantee it. And after this conversation of just understanding just the universe working with you and living in the present or being present and living in the now, um, Sean, this is exactly what I needed to kind of kind of purify myself. I really feel like cleansed. You know, I really feel like I have a mindset now that I can take with me and really focus on the tasks ahead. And the people listening, I hope you kind of feel the same. It might affect people in different ways because this might be new to a lot of people. There might be people out there that never really thought about this. They've never really heard the spirituality like this before. Um, but Sean, you gave some great insight and and 
the one thing you keep on harping on is you found your passion with nature. And for the people out there listening, you got to find yours. And when you do, it's remarkable. Um, Sean, anything you want to share before I let you go? Well, I just appreciate you reaching out to me, Jake, and you know I appreciate what you're doing. I'm, you know, thrilled to hear, you know, of you out there trying to help people find a reset in their life. I mean, I feel like that we're at a critical time in history where, you know, a lot of things are changing and and you know, and I feel like there is an awareness growing, and the more people that are out there helping spread awareness, helping us spread this idea of just, you know, kind of you know, letting go of a lot of our conditioning and finding that new place, a reset, as you call it, that that's important. So I want to thank you for, you know, reaching out and wanting to serve the people as well. And I want to thank you for reaching out to me and helping give me a voice to help spread love to others, because ultimately that's my yeah. mission in life is to spread love to oh, others. Oh, for sure. And I think you have uh, spread the love for sure on this podcast. And um, I think everybody's touched by it. How can people connect with you? Do you got a Facebook, Twitter? I do. I've got Facebook. I've got Twitter. My website is seanreader.com. And, you know, that'll give you um, links to all my different work. I'm on Facebook, facebook.com slash seanreader. Twitter, the same thing, twitter.com slash seanreader. And, um, yeah, please feel free to contact me. Send me an email, a message on Facebook, you know, a friend request. I, I love connecting with people and I love just being able, I love the, you know, this whole modern age of social yeah. media has given more and more people this opportunity to spread love because, you know, it's like we all have this opportunity now to get out there and reach people. And so I think it's a brilliant time. And maybe some people, you know, use it in ways that are detrimental to themselves because they might get addicted to Facebook or, or whatever it is. But in the end, it's a tool. And it's a tool that is giving more and more of us the ability to share, you know, beautiful insight with others. And so, yeah, I, I really appreciate this time we're in and how more and more people around the world are having the opportunity to raise up their voices and share them out there. To and the for the people listening, I hope you guys got some great value out of this. Sean, thank you so much. Um, oh, I was going to say one other thing, you know, how you said, oh, you can contact me, email, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever. I said, I was just going to say, I was going to butt in there, but I was going to wait until you're done. Well, you know, it might take him about three months because he might be in a van in the middle of some random country. So, <laughs> so, so just people be forewarned, you know, it, it just uh, kind of wait. It, he will come. He will answer. It will just take some time. <laughs> It, it is true. I mean, I definitely kind of get out there sometimes and I don't always have the opportunity to connect as you know quickly as I would like to. And I may not, and I don't even get the opportunity to get yeah, back to everyone. Okay. But, you know, even when it's not in individual messages, I try to, to read everything that comes to me and then maybe even, you know, share through my blog, through the Facebook in ways that can you know, kind of answer people's questions for everybody else to be able to experience it as well. Uh, remarkable stuff, Sean. Thank you so much again. Appreciate your time. And uh, let's keep in touch. Uh, you're, you're doing a great thing, and I, and I hope to join you on your journey. Well, thank you so much, Jake. I really appreciate your time. And um, yeah, I look forward to keeping in touch. So what do you guys think? That's Sean Reader. Um, he has his website at seanreader.com. It's S-H-A-W-N-R-E-E-D-E-R. Go check him out seanreader.com. Um, amazing work, amazing guy, really just believing in nature that it can really cleanse you, give you energy, whatever. Now, again, some of the things might obtain to you, you might appreciate, you might understand, and there's some things that you just didn't get, you know, you just didn't connect like Sean does with nature or what I do with nature, or whatever. The thing is, if you're able to just maybe sit outside for a little bit and enjoy the, the chirping of the birds or just releasing yourself and, and say you just had it at work, you had it with your, your family just for that couple hours and you're looking for a place to escape, instead of crawling in the basement, instead of crawling by your laptop, maybe crawl outside and just sit somewhere. Go to a local park, go to the beach, go to the forest, wherever, and just sit there and maybe just release your, your anger, release your frustration, release something within and then... Pull in nature, pull in the beauty of everything that's surrounding you, and maybe that will give you the cleansing that you need to kind of restart your life or restart your day or that moment or to get past that that horrible interview or that horrible uh, um, you know talk with your boss or your cousin or your a family member or whoever it may be. 
Maybe try to utilize nature as your escape. Like I said earlier uh, in the podcast, you know what? It's about the little things in our lives. It's about enjoying the little things. It's about, for me, you know, seeing my my newborn, you know, grab something. You know, it, it's about you experiencing nature. It's about you experiencing things that are going on, meeting interesting people, about living your life to the fullest. Because you know what? Like I keep saying time and time again, but I love saying it. This is the only life we have. I mean, it really is. And and you know what? Yeah, tomorrow we can start a new and you know what? Tomorrow is going to be the new me or whatever. Why not start that right now? Why keep waiting until the next day? Start right now to enjoy everything that surrounds you. Yeah, there, you're going to you're, you're gonna encounter difficulty. Yeah, there's going to be moments you're just going to hate life and just hate everything and hate everybody around you. But don't be that person. Don't be that guy. Be the person that's positive. Be the person that's emotionally charged. Be the person that that can cry (laughs) at those silly movies because you're just in tune with what is going on and in tune with your own emotions and just enjoying everything to the fullest. Because what's the point of living if you can't enjoy and be emotionally interactive with the world, with whatever you're doing? That would be a dull life, wouldn't it? So there you go. That's my two cents. Put it in the jar. Wait until I keep filling up that jar with more two cents before you cash in that sucker. But until then, guys, keep living your life. Keep enjoying the little moments. Keep enjoying everything that's around you. So there you guys go. Make it a great day. Have a great day. We will catch you next week. Thank you so much, guys. Seriously, for supporting me, for the emails, for the reviews. I cannot do this without you guys. And for the people that that have not left a review or have not sent me an email, please do that. Go to Operation Self Reset on iTunes, leave a review. It would be super grateful. I would really appreciate it. And also too, if you have a question, concern, you need help with something, um, I can guide you in the right direction. Send me an email. I might not be able to help you, but I will be truthful and honest with you because that's what it's all about, being truthful and honest. And you guys can use that tip too. So there you go, another penny for the jar. Take care, guys. We'll catch you next week.